Hello, my name is Jennifer Loftus, and I'm the patient care manager of the inpatient orthopedics unit here at Mount Sinai West. On behalf of the entire treatment team, I would like to welcome you to Mount Sinai West, as well as thank you for choosing our esteemed providers for your joint replacement surgery. Together with your doctor, our interdisciplinary treatment team will get you up and running the same day after surgery and home possibly the same day as your surgery or by 12 o'clock the day after your surgery. We're dedicated to providing you with exceptional service and a great patient experience. So if you need anything during your hospital stay, please feel free to reach out to myself, Jennifer, or a member of our treatment team. Thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you soon. Hi, I'm Alana. And I'm Lindsay. And we're physician assistants with the orthopedic team at Mount Sinai West Hospital. And we're gonna walk you through on how to prepare and what to expect for your upcoming surgery here at Mount Sinai West Hospital. Thank you for choosing our institution to have your surgery. We want your experience to be as pleasant as possible and we'll do whatever we can to ensure that this happens. A week before surgery, you're going to stop taking the following medications and over-the-counter medications, all anti-inflammatory meds, vitamins, herbal and natural supplements, and please refer to your primary care physician regarding all other medications. So during your admission, your provider may convert your home medications to an equivalent hospital formulary medication, but we'll make sure that you have all of your home meds um, needed in the hospital. These are just some examples. Some medications are permitted the morning of surgery and some are not. We'll instruct you about which of your heart medications, your blood pressure medications, diabetes or asthma medications to take. And we'll remind you during the pre-op call which medications to take the morning of surgery and which to not take. So ideally before a joint class today, you've had all necessary blood work, um, EKG done, a chest x-ray if necessary, and your letter of medical clearance by your primary care physician. Five days prior to surgery as well, you're going to start using HibiCleanse. You'll use about a teaspoon, a teaspoon and a half on a washcloth and apply it to the operative site. You can purchase HibiCleanse over the counter or speak to your surgeon's office to arrange picking up the pre-op materials. Please refrain from using lotion and please refrain from shaving the extremity a week prior to surgery. For at least 72 hours prior to surgery, you're going to not smoke, you're going to not drink any alcohol or use any recreational drugs. They may interfere with the anesthesia medications. If you develop a cold, a virus, a sore throat, or any other illness during the week before your scheduled surgery, please contact your surgeon's office. It will be determined whether your procedure should be rescheduled or not. What are you gonna bring for the day of surgery? You're going to pack a hospital bag, and please include the following. Comfortable, loose clothing, comfortable supportive sneakers or shoes, personal toiletries, government issued photo to ID, insurance card, a prescription card, and a list of the medications you are currently taking. Please also bring a credit card for copays, for discharge medications, durable medical equipment, and transportation. On the day of surgery, do not wear contact lenses or body jewelry. You may wear eyeglasses, hearing aids, or dentures, but they must be removed prior to surgery. Please bring the containers in which you store these items as well. Please do not bring any valuables or jewelry to the hospital. On the evening before surgery, we're going to contact you to let you know the time to arrive for surgery. Eight hours before surgery, you're going to stop eating all solid food, but you may continue to drink clear liquids. Before you leave for the hospital, you're going to drink an additional 16 ounces of the following clear liquids. Gatorade, but not the red color, black coffee or tea, but no milk, and water. You're going to avoid milk, alcohol, and drinks with pulp. Remember to take your medications at this time if you need to, and your case may be canceled if you do not follow the above instructions. Please arrive on time. You'll be directed to the admitting or ambulatory surgery per the pre-op phone call on the day before. Before surgery, you're going to be given a hospital gown to wear. You'll have a hospital ID bracelet put on your wrist as well. For your safety, you're going to be asked multiple times to verify your name and your date of birth throughout your hospitalization. This is just to ensure you're getting the correct procedure or treatment that is planned for you. You'll meet a member of the orthopedic and the anesthesia team, and you'll have time to discuss any questions or concerns. You'll also be asked to sign consent forms. 
And finally, your operative site will be marked by the orthopedic team. The anesthesiologist will meet with you prior to surgery to discuss your anesthesia and answer any questions you may have. An IV line will be placed in your arm which will allow medications to be given to you so that you're comfortable throughout the procedure. If you've had any bad experiences in the past with the anesthesia, please inform the anesthesiologist when you speak with them. It is important that they have as much information as possible to provide the best anesthesia care to you. Each patient will have a one-time therapeutic dose of an iodine-based medication to get rid of MRSA that lingers in your nose. If you have an allergy to iodine, you would have been prescribed Bactroban preoperatively to apply in your nostrils two times a day for five days before surgery. After surgery, you're going to be taken to the PACU, or the post-anesthesia care unit, a unit where you'll be closely monitored. You'll notice a few things, a bandage around your operative site, an ice pack or a cooling machine that will be placed on the operative site, and you'll be evaluated by a physical therapist in the recovery room. You'll remain in this area for a few hours where it's important for you to rest. You'll be asked to rate the severity of pain using a pain scale. There is no right or wrong answer. We just want you to rate your pain as best as you can to give us an idea of how close we are to making you comfortable. You'll be asked frequently about your pain, and sometimes patients receive a nerve block performed by the anesthesia team in the recovery room to decrease your pain as well. You'll also be given pain medication by mouth. There's a few different types of medications to take. Some are on demand and some are scheduled. Please advise the nurse if your pain is not improving. A cooling machine or an ice pack will be placed to help with pain and decrease inflammation. Please just tell your doctor, your nurse, or any other staff member when you're having pain. And don't be afraid to ask for the pain medication. Some methods to assist for pain relief are relaxation techniques, resting, deep breathing exercises, proper positioning, or distraction techniques such as music, TV, or visitors. Welcome to the orthopedic unit. It's a unit designated for patients who have undergone total joint replacements, and there's a ton of specialized staff up on the floor to help make sure that your recovery is as smooth and as positive as possible. You'll be seen by a nurse or nursing assistant every hour throughout the day and every two hours overnight, and you'll get to meet a bunch of other patients who have undergone similar surgeries as well. Included at the bedside are a few things. We have an ice pack or a cooling machine, sequential compression device, an intensive spirometer, a call bell, a TV remote, and a whiteboard with your surgeon's name and your nurse's name for the day so you know who's taking care of you. Your surgeon and his or her assistants will evaluate you in the morning and throughout the day. You'll be assigned a physical therapist who will help you with walking and range of motion exercises, and an occupational therapist who will help you perform activities of daily living with your new joint. A social worker will also meet with you on the first day after your surgery to help you start discussing discharge planning. An incentive spirometer is going to be at bedside to help you take deep breaths. The nursing staff will show you how to use it. We encourage you to use it hourly too. You'll sit upright um, in a chair next to your bed every day. For the incentive spirometer, you're going to perform exercises 10 to 20 times every hour. Coughing and deep breathing exercises performed a few times every hour will help break up any congestion going on inside your lungs. How do we prevent blood clots from forming? So you'll walk every day with your therapist, and while you're in bed, the nursing staff will place these SCDs on your legs to provide continuous circulation to both of your legs. An anticoagulant medication will be prescribed to you in the hospital to keep your blood thin in order to prevent any clots from forming. You'll be placed on this oral anticoagulant in the hospital, and it will be prescribed to you when you are discharged as well. Some examples are aspirin, Xarelto, and Eliquis. Antibiotics will be given to you through your IV for the first day as a preventative measure. And while you're with us, our orthopedic team will evaluate your wounds and keep your wound covered to prevent infection. If you have diabetes, it's very important to keep your sugars under control. We have a few weeks to get your new joint moving, especially for a knee replacement. It's really important to start bending and straightening your knee right after surgery. Initially, it's going to be done under the guidance of the team here, but when you get home, it's important that you continue these exercises as well. On the day of discharge, you'll receive a few medications, pain medication, a blood thinner, and a stool softener, and anything else will be determined by your surgeon. You'll also go home with some durable medical equipment, and you'll receive from the nursing staff and the orthopedic team detailed instructions for continuation of your medications, your wound care, exercises, and any follow-up care. Our hope is for you to continue living a healthy lifestyle so you'll continue to exercise and walk daily, maintain a healthy weight, watch what you eat, and smoking cessation if you haven't already done so. 
You'll follow up with your surgeon a few weeks after you leave the hospital, but if you have any concerns while you're at home, please call your doctor's office, home care agency, or for a medical emergency, please call 911. Our goal is for you to have a safe and positive experience here at Mount Sinai West Hospital. We encourage you to push yourself as much as you can, and we'll help you with all the tools and assistance while you're with us to make sure that your surgery is a huge success. And please remember to walk every day. Hello, my name is Paul McNamara and I am a physical therapist here at Mount Sinai West with the Department of Rehabilitation and Human Performance. Hello, my name is Reagan McCraney and I'm an occupational therapist here at Mount Sinai West. Occupational therapists help individuals to improve their ability to perform daily activities such as dressing and grooming. You will see your occupational therapist after surgery once a day. Physical therapists will help you relearn how to transfer and out of bed, walk around your home environment, and navigate stairs if necessary. The physical therapist will see you one to two times per day while you're in the hospital. PT and OT will work together on your independence to go home. Our rehab goals by the time you're discharged from Mount Sinai West are that you can get yourself in and out of bed, that you can walk safely with an assisted device such as a rolling walker in your home environment, going up and down stairs if necessary. We'll make sure that you know your basic home exercises and that you have awareness of what movements are encouraged and what movements, if any, should be avoided after your surgery. The day of surgery, therapists will come work with you in the recovery room or on the orthopedic floor. We will start by sitting you up at the edge of the bed, standing with a walker and walking at the bedside. We will also begin some basic exercises with you. The day after surgery, we will transfer you out of bed and sitting into a chair. We will walk in the room with a rolling walker or another assistive device. We will go over exercises in bed and in the chair. The nursing staff will also be available to assist you in and out of bed. We will discuss any equipment needs that you need for discharge. We will practice going up and down the stairs if it is necessary for you. And most of you will be going home this first day after surgery. There's exercises in your binder. We recommend you perform these exercises three times a day while in the hospital and continue at home. After your surgery, you may require some equipment. A PT or OT can call you ahead of time upon request to discuss your home environment and help you figure out any DME needs. Some of this equipment can be covered by your insurance while others will need to be paid out of pocket. We do have house vendors for some equipment, and others can be purchased from your local surgical supply store or online from vendors like Amazon. Some of the bathroom equipment you may require is a commode, a raised toilet seat, a shower chair, or a transfer tub bench. Please be advised that if any equipment was ordered to be delivered home, either pre- or post-operatively, it is your responsibility to follow up with a vendor to provide any payment and or delivery information. Failure to do so may result in delay or cancellation of your order. Your PTOT team will provide you with the vendor information. Some equipment required for dressing is seen here in a hip kit. It is important that upon discharge you have somebody to accompany you home. A pair of rubber-soled shoes to wear home will be helpful. It's easier to get up and down from a firm chair with armrest initially after your surgery. If you do need to sit on a lower chair or couch, you may need to add pillows to elevate the surface. Please clear clutter and throw rugs from your main areas that you will be moving around in the house. Be mindful of pets and use caution when walking on different surfaces. After your surgery, it will be helpful to have had prepared meals ahead of time and have a plan for grocery shopping or meal delivery. Organizing your kitchen to have items easily in reach is also helpful. In your bedroom, you want to make sure that you tape down and remove any cords from your walkways, ensuring that you remove all tripping hazards. Organize your clothes to make them easier to reach. Organize your shelves in your bathroom prior to surgery as well, making sure all frequently used items are easily accessible. Also make sure that the bathroom doorway has clear access. Safety with lower body dressing. Please take caution when placing feet into or out of pants and undergarments. All lower body dressing should be performed from a seated position as you heal from surgery. Only stand to pull up or down garments between knee and waist level. It is your responsibility to do your best when the PT and OT come to see you. Try to perform your exercises throughout the day while in the hospital as well as once you get home. 
We want your surgery to be a success and your recovery to go as smoothly as possible. Thank you for choosing Mount Sinai West for your joint replacement. Hi there, my name is Michał Sokolowski. I'm a senior physical therapist here at Mount Sinai West. So after your total joint replacement surgery, um, the best thing you can do is to ambulate, change positions throughout the day as much as possible. Um, the worst thing you can do is stay in one position in bed all day. Uh, it puts you at risk of a lot of complications. So taking little walks to the kitchen, to the bathroom, uh, doing as much on your own as possible um, is the most important. In your discharge paperwork, you will get a set of basic exercises um, to do at home. Uh, you will also go over them in your joint class. I suggest that you go through them already so you're comfortable doing them at home before you even have the surgery. It's a lot easier to tap into that muscle memory to do the exercises uh, than to learn a new exercise when you arrive in the hospital. So the first exercise is very simple. Uh, it's called a quad set. Uh, for all these exercises, um, the uh, frequency is uh, listed on the handout. It's three sets of 10, three times a day. So we're shooting for about 90 repetitions per day. Um, especially after a new replacement, you might want to space those exercises more frequently. So maybe a set of 10 every hour just to keep that knee nice and loose. So the first one, you're gonna work on knee extension in bed, uh, laying flat. So you're gonna press straight down into the bed, contract the quadriceps muscle, maintain that contraction for five seconds, and then just relax it. And that counts as one repetition. So we're shooting for 10 of those. Very simple exercise, um, just gets that knee into full extension in supine. The second exercise, now we're focusing on knee flexion. So you're going to slide your heel towards you as far as you can. There you go, cat has beautiful range of motion. You will not have that range of motion after surgery, but we are um, aiming to stretch that knee. So you can extend it back down, slide it back. Uh, this might be difficult after surgery just because of pain and swelling. Um, still very important to push through that pain and swelling to get that new range of motion. So what you can do is you can use your hands on your thigh to help pull that leg towards you to get more of that stretch. Or an alternate method is you can, if you have a strap at home, you can use a strap. If you don't, a rolled up sheet works just fine. You can hook that sheet under your foot and just use your hands to pull that leg towards you. Perfect. All right. Perfect. The next exercise is called a straight leg raise, SLR for short. So you can bend the opposite leg just to uh, relieve some pressure on your back. And then you want to raise your leg straight up. And again, cat has great flexibility. You can go to about the height of the knee on the other hand, and that will be great. That's a very difficult exercise to do after a knee replacement. Should be a little bit easier after a hip replacement, but still a challenge. Again, you can use that rolled up sheet to help pull it up. Perfect. The next one is a terminal knee extension. So you can have a rolled up sheet or rolled up pillow underneath that knee, right? So you see how that knee now is in a little bit of flexion. Uh, here, a note of caution, this position does feel great after a knee replacement. Do not leave that pillow under the knee. You want that knee nice and straight when it's in bed and the physical therapist here will definitely stress that when they see you. Um, but for the exercise, you're just straightening the knee. There you go. Nice and slow, and then back down. Perfect. Okay. The most basic exercise after a surgery, it prevents, um, helps prevent blood clots and diminish swelling. It's called ankle pumps. This you can do on both legs, just full plantar flexion, 
dorsiflexion. So moving your ankles up and down, nice and slow. And those you can do if you're watching TV, every commercial break. Um, again, the recommendation in the handout is three sets of 10, three times a day. But these, I, I highly recommend that you do more frequently throughout the day. And you can do those laying down or sitting up. OK, and the final one, you can sit up. Again, this exercise is predominantly for knee replacement patients, but you can do those after a hip replacement as well. We're going to work on that knee extension and flexion again. So this is for extension. Nice and slow. Try to not rely on the momentum. And again, after a new replacement, this exercise will be very difficult to complete. And you can mo modify it with either a strap or a rolled up sheet just to, again, stretch that knee, make sure that that scar tissue is not forming in a way that it restricts your range of motion. Very nice, so that's for extension. If you scoot forward, then you can focus on flexion and sliding that heel under you, forward and back as far as you can. And again, Kat has full range of motion, so this is a lot easier for her than somebody after a total joint replacement. And you can use the other leg to actually push the leg forward and back as well. Um, it's a lot easier if you have some back support for that one, for the modification. Again, the physical therapist will go over all these exercises with you when you're here after your surgery. And if you have any questions about them still, make sure to ask either a PT or an OT. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Emily Sherlock and I'm a social work manager at Mount Sinai West. After your surgery, a social worker will work with you, your family, your doctors, and your therapists to formulate and execute a personalized discharge plan. There are daily rounds where your team will meet to discuss your progress, your needs, and your concerns. Once we have formulated a discharge plan, a social worker will speak with you about the recommendations for discharge. If you are recommended for home care services upon discharge, including home PT, nursing, or occupational therapy, a social worker will review these services with you. You will be provided a list of certified home health agencies, and a social worker will refer you to an agency in your area to determine if they can accept your insurance. The provision of these services is dependent on the agency's staffing availability and locating an agency that accepts your insurance. If your case is accepted for home care services, they will begin 24 to 48 hours after the agency confirms its availability. Once services are confirmed by the home care agency, a physical therapist will come to your home between three and five days a week. Complete duration of therapy is between one to three weeks post-surgery. Most patients have two weeks of in-home therapy. The goal of intensive therapy is to get you back to your normal life in your home faster. Subacute rehab is explored for those patients who would not be safe at home based on the evaluation of the team. This level of care consists of a few hours of therapy daily in a skilled nursing facility. The social worker will provide you with a list of rehab facilities in your area, and you will be referred to the facilities of your choice that are in network with your insurance. You can check out the list of skilled nursing facilities online at www.medicare.gov. When you have been accepted to a subacute rehab facility, the social worker will inform you of the accepting facility. Social work will collaborate with the team to obtain authorization from your insurance if it is needed. Social work will help facilitate your transfer once confirmed and authorized. At subacute rehab, you'll participate in 1.5 hours of PT daily, and an average day is about two weeks. The following services are not usually covered by your insurance, although we are able to arrange them if it's absolutely needed. Transportation from the hospital to home, in some instances transportation to the rehab center, and private nursing home attendant care. Each insurance plan is different, and we are happy to explore your individual plan's allowances with you post-surgery. And finally, we want you to get back to your old or new self quickly, safely, and comfortably. We are here to help, so please let the social worker know if you have any questions regarding your discharge plan. If you have any questions for social work prior to your surgery, please inform your orthopedic team and they'll schedule you for a phone call with a social worker. 
While it is our mission at Mount Sinai West to connect patients with the most convenient and dedicated certified home health agencies in the five boroughs, we have recently seen a decrease in availability of home physical therapists and less insurance coverage of post-op physical therapy in the home. Our institution is rallying behind the trend to go directly to outpatient physical therapy and not waste any time at all beginning the road to recovery. At the time you were booked for surgery, your surgeon may have provided you with an outpatient physical therapy referral in preparation for this transition. If not, please notify us and we will provide you with a script. We encourage you to take time prior to surgery to look for an outpatient physical therapy facility in your local community. Please reach out to the facility regarding insurance coverage. Thank you so much for your understanding. Hi, my name is Elise. I'm one of the dietitians here at Mount Sinai West, and I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about some strategies to optimize your nutrition both before and after your surgery to get you back on your feet as soon as possible. So first we're going to talk about some strategies to get your body ready for the surgery from a nutrition perspective. Um, it's going to be really important that we are fueling your body properly to prep in advance of the stress that the procedure is going to put on your body. It's going to be important to include protein one to two weeks before your surgery, um, making sure that you are including a protein at every meal and snack. So that can be from an animal source such as meat, uh, eggs, chicken, poultry, fish, or it can also come from our plant-based so sources such as tofu, uh, nuts and seeds, as well as beans. It's really important to include protein because protein does provide building blocks for muscles, bones, and it does also strengthen your immune system by promoting the production of antibodies. Protein is going to allow you to be as strong as possible going into surgery. We do also want to make sure that you are stocking up on your fruits and vegetables prior to surgery. Our fruits and vegetables are a great source of various vitamins and minerals, including vitamin C, vitamin K, iron, and magnesium that are all going to be helpful um, both prior to and following your surgery. And vegetables and fruits also help to support a healthy immune system, promote regular blood sugar levels, and reduce overall inflammation. Typically, the darker the vegetable or fruit, the more nutrient dense it's going to be. Another thing that's going to be really important preoperatively is going to be adequate hydration. Uh, studies have shown that patients who are well hydrated prior to their procedure report overall less pain and nausea following the surgery. So we want to make sure that you're drinking at least eight eight ounce glasses of water per day. And we do want to try to limit our consumption of foods that are going to cause increased stress on the body, such as sugar, alcohol, and caffeine. Uh, it's not to say that you can't have any, but we do want to make sure that we are trying to limit any excess stress that, and inflammation that can be put on the body prior to your procedure. This is also very important for our diabetic patients. We want to make sure that you're reducing any intake of uh, sugar sweetened beverages and excess sugar intake to help promote blood sugar control and reduce the risk of inflammation, infection, and uh, increase wound healing following your procedure. So after your procedure, uh, we want to make sure that we are fueling your body to get you back on your feet as quickly as you can. Nutrition is going to be a really important part of that. Um, so again, we're going to talk about some components that can help you get on your feet as quickly as possible. Protein, once again, is going to be really important. As we discussed, it promotes wound healing. It also helps to repair the damaged body tissues and keep your immune system strong. And it's going to come from those sources that we previously discussed, both animal and plant-based proteins. Vitamin C is also really important in the post-operative stage as it helps to heal wounds as well as form collagen in bone, muscle, and skin. Um, you can find this in a variety of fruits and vegetables, but primarily vitamin C is going to be found in those citrus fruits as well as strawberries, kiwi, uh, potatoes, peppers, broccoli, and kale. Vitamin A is also really important during this stage because it helps with skin healing, cell growth, and it does also support the immune system. 
Uh, vitamin A is typically found in our orange fruits and vegetables, as well as our dark leafy greens, such as kale and spinach. Um, zinc is also really important for wound healing. You're gonna find that primarily in fortified dairy products and cereals, as well as lean red meats, sesame, and pumpkin. Vitamin D and calcium are gonna be both really helpful for maintaining our bone strength, um, and calcium specifically is also important for activating many enzymes throughout the body and contributes to blood clotting, which are important in the post-operative phase. In order to make sure we're getting enough calcium and vitamin D, we wanna to look to our milk sources as well as calcium fortified juices, cereals and dairy products. Um, vitamin D specifically can also be found in egg yolks, salmon and sunlight and calcium can be found in those dark leafy vegetables, especially broccoli. Another food component we wanna highlight in the post-operative phase is omega-3 fatty acids. These are gonna be really important for preventing or helping to eliminate excess inflammation. Um, they can be found in our plant oils, such as flaxseed oil, as well as avocado, fatty fish, nuts, and green vegetables. One of the most common complications following surgery can be decreased appetite. It's very common in the post-operative phase, but that does not mean that our body does not need increased calories and protein. As a result, we want to make sure that if you are finding it difficult to eat your baseline portions of food, that we are utilizing some strategies to help combat that. Transitioning from three big meals a day to five to six small meals a day can be a strategy to help increase your overall intake of calories and protein, and including high calorie, low volume foods such as avocado, olive oil, dairy products, and nuts and seeds can also be very helpful when trying to increase your overall calorie and protein intake and pack a punch in each bite that you're eating. Another strategy to help combat decreased appetite is to drink your calories. So that can either be from a smoothie made at home that includes maybe your favorite nut butter, a fruit vegetable protein powder, as well as your milk of choice. And you can also find this in your pre-made nutrition drinks that you can find at a local drugstore, such as Ensure or Boost. Another strategy that can be helpful is working with a dietitian, both or either in or out of the hospital um, on some ways that you can optimize your nutrition post-operatively. Constipation is another concern that comes up in the post-operative phase as a result of decreased movement and some of the pain medications which are known to be constipating. Uh, in order to combat that, we wanna make sure that you continue to stay adequately hydrated um, drinking at least two liters of fluid a day. And we also want to make sure that you're including those high fiber foods at each meal. So that would come from your fruits, your vegetables, and your whole grains, which will also help to get you your vitamin and mineral requirements. Fiber, um, especially our insoluble fiber found in our, in our nuts and seeds, as well as fruits with the skin on and our leafy greens are going to be really helpful for uh, maintaining normal bowel function, so those are some of the things we're going to want to include on a daily basis. And this is just highlighting a lot of the topics that we had discussed. We want to make sure that, again, you are staying adequately hydrated prior to your procedure and that you're making sure that you're including a lot of fruits and vegetables that have both that fiber, vitamin, and mineral component to them. We want to make sure that you are eating enough in the post-operative phase and meeting those increased calorie and protein needs through smaller, more frequent meals, as well as protein-packed snacks. We do also want to make sure you're avoiding any excess stress on the body by continuing to limit our consumption of excess sugar, processed foods, and alcohol. And if you do find that you have any questions or you're concerned that your appetite has remained low in the post-operative phase, feel free to reach out to a dietitian to help. Thank you.